Well, he and we did find out when Chris Froome inserted himself between Roglic and Carapaz on the front of the peloton and overruled the race director's command to roll out. Javier Guillen got out of the lead race car to plead his case as an innocent party, but Froome remained both unmoved and stationary. It was unclear at first from eavesdropping distance exactly what the decision was, a token delay to the race or something more radical. It turned out to be the latter. We, we changed the jersey now for yesterday because it changed the race. If we start and Gumbo have the jersey, they need to control. If we, if we start and we have the jersey, we need to control. So it changes the whole race. We can't just talk about this later. It's something that needs to be decided now. The problem was that a jersey change isn't in the gift of the race director. It's down to the UCI commissaires, who weren't there to either lay down the law or amend it. While Roglic and Carapaz stayed out of things, Jumbo Visma's Pal Martins moved across to confer with Froome, while Enric Mass and Luis Leon Sanchez listened in. A good five minutes after the race should have rolled out, patience began to run out among some of the Spanish riders, most notably Luis Angel Mate, who urged JJ Rojas and Enric Mass to join him in simply setting off. And that, without the issue in question ever having been settled, is how the race finally started. Now, since there were no time gaps between the top two today, we're left where we were at the start of the stage with the contentious jury decision which put Primoz Roglic in red. Representatives of Jumbo Visma, Ineos and Mobistar did meet with the UCI commissaires and the race director after the stage, and that meeting yielded a promise to review the rest of the stages in the race to make sure there's no repeat of yesterday. But in a statement put out before the meeting, the UCI was unapologetic about the Stage 10 decision, blaming the race organisation for initially identifying it as a bunch finish and saying once they'd seen it, they invoked the rule allowing the president of the commissaires to interpret situations as necessary and implement any exceptions. So, as if there's not enough going on in the world at the moment, we're obliged to spend another post-race chat down a cycling rulebook rabbit hole. So much for turning to sport for escape. And, David, let's start with this UCI statement that they evidently issued in the genuine belief that it might clear things up. Seems to me it's all very well saying we're going to let uh, the president of the commissaires exercise his discretion when the letter of the law is going to make no sense. But this was a rule that was specifically introduced to stop the favourites racing in the finale and keep things safer. So if they've already done that, how can you reinterpret the rules after the race has already been run? Yeah, there's a lot of things in there. Uh, <laughs> I, <laughs> excuse me. Uh, there's a couple of things. I think uh, the letter of the law is one thing, but in, a, in order to have discretion, you have to experience, you have to know it, you have to know what's going on. And there has to be so much information that you recognise and can, can create patterns around. At the moment, they're literally writing rules that have no general application or kind of ability to, to be uh, applied to a situation like this, or even the process to do it. So uh, it's baffling for all of us, and it's disappointing for the UCI. And you would have thought, I mean, they've now committed to reviewing all the stages left in the race to make sure they agree, you know, with the designation that the race organisation has given them. I think they might have done that before the race started. Yeah, yeah, probably that would have been a good idea. But this is, and to throw a bone to the UCI, uh, professional cycling is probably one of the hardest sports in the world to judicate, to referee, to uh, write laws for because it is different every year. We're, they're not going to stadiums. It's not one pitch. There's not one field. There's not one course. Every year it changes. Every day changes. So what you have to do is create generalizations. And it's quite, and if you're doing generalizations, that requires discretion. And it's not just about the course. It's about the behavior of the athletes. Now they're trying to do something which perhaps uh, is wrong. Uh, there has to be discretion. Yeah. And, and I suppose the problem with what Chris Froome was asking for down at the start, you know, swapping jerseys, he was asking for something that Javier Guillén, and the race director, simply couldn't grant him. Well, also, to put in perspective, uh, Javier Guillén is the uh, race uh, director from the organisation. He has no uh, refereeing ability. That is, he is the representative from the owners of the bike race, the Vuelta España, like Christian Prudhomme is at the Tour de France. And then the UCI come in and they supply the referees. So Javier 
has no contact with the referees and he's not supposed to. So it's a little bit weird that we end up in that situation where Chris Froome's having a conversation with him because actually he can't do anything because he's not allowed to because the reason he has the race that's being run is because UCI will officiate it and he's not allowed to make any decisions. And, and turning a little bit, at least, then, towards the race, um, the point Chris Froome was making about whoever has the red jersey changes the race entirely because of responsibility to control, that, that's a valid point. But on a day like today, when Roglic and um, Carapaz are so close anyway on that kind of mountain, would it have made a great deal of difference? No, but I think it's... Gary, I think it's the principle. And I think that's what it was this morning with that protest and... Chris Froome decided to stand up and doing that. It, and seeing the, the noise, the, the wave on social media and on internet uh, forced him to go up and stand up. And those three seconds are much more than three seconds. It's about uh, years of uh, the riders not feeling uh, fairly judged by the very referees that are supposed to look after them.